welcome to this first issue of Journalism Studies for 2013. I must say that when I began establishing this journal in 1998-99, I never imagined I'd still be in the editor's chair some 15 years later. But life's full of surprises and sometimes, and here we are discussing volume 14. The journal's been a considerable success in terms of the discursive space it provides for the discussion of key issues in journalism. The academic rigour and scholarly creativity which authors bring to that discussion and the very expansive number of subscribers who read the journal in hard copy or increasingly online. For me, it's still a great thrill to be the editor of this journal, which means that every day new submissions find their way onto my inbox and keep me in touch with the very latest research in the field. Volume 14 is testament to this success, with six issues which are all literally bursting at the seams in an effort to include as much as possible of the submitted work. We have two special issues in Volume 14. The first is edited by Lily Chuliaraki from the London School of Economics and Bolet Blagard from City University London. And this issue looks at cosmopolitanism in the context of new news media. The second special, edited by Sarah Newman and Matt Holbrook from Oxford University UK, explores aspects of the press and popular culture in interwar Europe. I'm delighted to welcome both of these very exciting scholarly conversations into the journal. But what about issue one, which kicks off our activities and thinking for 2013? Nakshi Zhizhi Durham leads the issue with a powerful study and analysis of the gendered violence in the New York Times reporting of the gang rape of a schoolgirl, while Irene Costiere-Meyer's study of When News Hurts focuses on the promise of participatory storytelling for urban problem neighborhoods. Maximilian, Hanska Ahi and Roxana Shapur ask who's reporting the protests in their fascinating account of the changing and they argue converging practices of citizen journalists and two BBC World Service newsrooms in reports of Iran's election protests to the Arab uprising. Ruth Palmer, in her essay about how people who have featured in news stories feel about the coverage they received, context matters, what interviews with news subjects can tell us about accuracy and error, illustrates the importance of interviewing people to get to the heart of their responses to coverage, rather than simply analysing the number of errors in journalists' account, which is the typical methodology here. Tim Luckhurst from Kent offers a fascinating reminder of the considerable press coverage of the Communist Party's People Convention, held in January 1941, and suggests that, quote, journalism offered news and comments sufficient to assist the formation of a genuine public opinion. Elaine Yuan adopts a community structure approach to online journalism in social transformations, while Yigal Godler and Zvi Reich consider how journalists think about facts and theorize the social conditions behind epistemological beliefs. The final article by Susan Ford and Jane Johnson examines the activities of what they term the news triumvirate and explores the impact of public relations and wire agencies in online copy. The issue concludes with book reviews and Monica Jeff Pierre and Max Ekstrom's research review, which this time looks at the long-term research outputs and strategy at journalism research at the University of Gothenburg, Sweden. So lots to go at here. 